How's it going, New World? Sephir here, and today we are back with another video. This time we will be talking about Trade Skill Aptitude. This is a new system within the game, and basically what it is is when you hit 200 in something, you can continue to earn experience. When you reach certain experience thresholds, you will earn a reward box based on that aptitude threshold. And then once you fully reach your experience bar all the way around the circle for a given trade skill, your counter will go up by one, as you can see this 200 and then zero on the right side. This will bump up to a one, and it will show you how many sort of like tiers you've earned over top of that and the ring will continue once again allowing you to earn rewards so the reason why this is important is because there are a lot of goodies coming from these boxes but more importantly the gypsum system which we just did a video on expertise and gypsum if you haven't seen that already go ahead and check that out i'll put a link in the description down below and it just came out today as well so go ahead and dive in so that you can understand what it's going to be uh, relevant to here. So the Emerald Gypsum Orb is an orb that is required for part of this 22 hour uh, cooldown system where you'll be generating yourself an expertise upgrade or a high watermark upgrade every time you create one of these. The only way to get an Emerald Orb is to create or to get an aptitude box, a trade skill aptitude box, which can come from any trade skill. It can be crafting, it can be refining, and it can also be gathering. However, these are not all created equal. So I know there's a lot of things out there talking about trade skill aptitude, but I'm actually here in the PTR testing these things out. So I went ahead and leveled logging up to 200 and I got additional skinning up to 200 to see if there was a difference. And yes, there definitely was. So then I looked into to some further data to see how all of these are functioning and I'm going to give you a general breakdown and then we're going to go over to the New World Database website, uh, shout out to Joe, where I'm going to take a look at the trade skill aptitude guide that he mentions and it's going to give exact XP values for each of these professions which will help give you an idea of what you're needing to be aiming at and I will then further touch up on that and tell you what each of these things means in terms of the actual game and playing it in the game in the end game. So in my opinion, up the top part, you have crafting. The crafting professions all have incredibly high levels of XP required to meet the next level of aptitude once you reach 200. And that means that their reward boxes are actually going to be better in the game. The reward boxes will give you recipes for the respective profession and tons of other interesting items. The furnishing level up thing will actually give you trophy pieces and you might even be able to get some of the trophy pieces that are not currently in the game like the uh, token to make the angry earth final tier and the token to make the lost final tier trophy so these are going to be where you're going to finally for the first time be able to see some of these items so that's really exciting there's also different cooking recipes and ingredients that can come from cooking arcana down the line you name it there's all kinds of good stuff in these uh crafting boxes for trade skill aptitude but the trade-off is that it requires a ridiculously large amount of experience in order to get them up there and We'll talk a little bit more about that later. The refining professions seem to be a byproduct of the gathering professions, with one exception being stone cutting, as it is a byproduct of several other professions, but it is actually quite easy to level up. And inside of the stone cutting aptitude box, you might be able to get some good gems and things like that too. Uh, so this will be one to keep an eye out for, but the other ones are pretty straightforward. You use the resources that you gather to gain more resources and then get an aptitude box which contains resources of that same category so for smelting it should give me smelting resources when i get this aptitude box and also it would give me a emerald gypsum gem token right that i could use on a 22 hour cooldown to get myself an upgrade for any item that i want in the game and then the final category is just going to be the gathering category, which is simply going to be go out into the world and pick up an item, right? Uh, but there's different levels of uh, variance on these. These tend to be the easier categories. And we'll talk about my personal favorites just for getting aptitude uh, boxes so that you could just get the tokens for the gypsum thing on the cooldown. I'll talk about that in the later part. Uh, but do keep in mind that these are very easy once you get them to 200 to get up there. Skinning is probably going to be the worst one as it's going to be 
uh, requiring a higher XP yield. So talking about XP yield, let's go ahead and dive into that. So we'll get the full list here and we'll take a look at these and then I'll give you the final verdict of what is best to push for in terms of getting the gypsum morph crafted and what is best to push for in terms of reward for your time spent in terms of money, money and also like character gain, so like item progression. So we'll go ahead and dive on over to that now. All right, here we are on the New World Database website. As you can see, this guide is written by Xiao, so shout out to him. I will put a link in the description down below so that you can check out all these values for yourself. But as we just explained how the aptitude or trade skill aptitude system works, we can now see the defined values and you can also see the boxes or rewards that it contains. I think that this data is still being worked on so we don't have full values. As you can see, we can click on this um, like a different box down here, like, uh, what was it, cooking or something like that. And it just has one item listed where it's just like, okay, Vial of Azoth. Obviously, there's more than just Vial of Azoth that's going to be coming from this thing. We just don't know the full values of it yet. Uh, so we'll have to see how that's presented uh, in the actual game when it comes out. But you can see some of the values. As you can see here, we can see that there are legendary recipes for Fire Staff, Life Staff, Ice Gauntlet, and they all have a different, unique look on it. So what you can do is you can get this pattern, and it will create a 600 gear score item, and that will be something very nice coming out of the highest level chest which will be the trade skill aptitude three which means you would have to get three ticks on that counter before you loop back around and then there are some other smaller ones that would probably just give i'm guessing random materials uh suited for the profession right uh, so anyways back to this here as you can see these experience values coming in top here any of the crafting professions is going to have a really high number this is 500k this one's 900 for the next one and then a 1.5 million right like so that's quite a lot armoring also has a lot cooking goes down a little bit more but that's just due to the amount of xp that's required to create cooking ingredients like when you create the highest level meal you can only get like 950 uh, so it's relevant to the trade skill like how much xp they're giving per craft do keep in mind that a lot of the trade skill crafts can get very expensive <laughs> very very expensive and over here you can see the lowest xp value which is going to be fishing however fishing is very tedious to get to 200 but once you are at 200 it can be very very powerful and in fact in my opinion it might be the best one in the game to do as you can get about 120 plus experience per cast maybe even a little bit more if you catch a high quality fish so that would put you at about roughly oh i don't know 50 odd some casts um, before you can maybe get this up maybe a little bit more than that uh, depending on if you're in a great zone or not uh, could be a little bit more um, i don't know i'm not a an expert fisherman so i don't know what the xp rate is on top of all that but it definitely looked a little bit appealing to me as you can see we have some other ones with like furnishing and furnishing is something special that we'll go ahead and talk about here because as you can see this packaged good has trophies in it so the tier three has a lot of trophies the tier two has tier two trophies in it which is very interesting as well you can get the stacked deck supposedly from the box in the tier two so that's nice to see as well as a lot of high level items but most importantly in this box we see something for the first time glowing sap which is the tier three angry earth trophy we have never been able to see this in the game before the same with ancient mandible so this might be the way where you get some of these things here is also the ephemeral seal which is for the lost bane trophy and the corrupted totem trophy which is in the game but only from one monster but this would give you a second resource to get it from so there are quite a lot of nice things in here included the loaded dice uh, so make sure to keep an eye out for this one as leveling up your furnishing past that 200 point will yield you some of these high value trophies so this might be the best profession to level up to make yourself money however it comes with a a catch here there's always a caveat it requires a tremendous amount of experience in order to hit that cap and if you are a furnisher yourself you know that furnishing is no joke and it takes quite a lot as you can see, a lot of the gathering professions, like harvesting over here, only require 17,000 in order to hit their cap. Logging requiring 41,000, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Mining at 16,000. And then a lot of the byproduct um, trade skills, like stone cutting, where you cut gems that you've gathered, or smelting, where you smelt ore that you've gathered. 
you know, things like that, even woodworking where you, you know, craft the logs that you have gathered, they're all at about that 800,000 range, which means that you will probably just get these inevitably by doing gathering. So it's kind of like a bonus on top of a bonus. So the way I see it right now is that if you want a trade skill profession like at the top of the screen in game where you actually create a product with materials that is usable then that is going to be something that you're going to do because you want the box that gives you either the recipe or the trophy item from furnishing right those are going to be what you're going to want to do because armoring has the same thing you can make level 600 recipes from the box and same with weaponsmithing should be down here you can make 600 gear score great axe if you want so you're going to be aiming for an item if you want those the gathering skills is going to be your fastest way to hit a trade skill aptitude box and it is going to be your best way to get the emerald gypsum so that's going to be something good for you to go for and then the final product of that, which would be like your woodworking and your stone cutting, these are all going to be things that you will just naturally accrue as you create your daily cooldowns and you create or use the refining materials that you have gathered. So now we'll talk about a few of my favorites and that's going to be the first on my list. I'm gonna give you like a top three. So for just getting the efficiency here right we're just talking about getting the trade skill at the two box logging is going to be your best route to go 100 logging all the way because logging requires 41,000 experience however when you log a giant ironwood tree you get 6,000 experience which is ridiculous so if i were to log let's say five giant ironwood trees i would then have thirty thousand experience and as you can see i'm pretty much there i've already leveled up my aptitude box so this is going to be your quickest way if you just want to hit that 22 hour emerald cooldown and get that it's probably going to be logging do keep in mind there are a finite amount of ironwood trees so if your server all knows that ironwood is the best way to go for leveling up these aptitude containers then everyone's going to be camping these ebon ebon spawns right the ironwood spawns and then you're just going to be uh, in a contested area where it's going to be harder for you um so just keep that in mind the best the next best thing i think is going to be mining because a oricalcum vein gives you anywhere from 700 to 1500 xp depending on the size of the vein so if you're hitting a bunch of large oricalcum veins you would only have to get 10 of them in order to get roughly that 16,000 experience maybe a little more uh, but it's very nice because you're going to be getting a lot of high quality materials like cinnabar and tolvium along the way as well as oricalcum which is also useful and then you can use all of that that to smelt as well which the same process applies for logging you can use those wood materials to use woodworking and then you will get a second uh you know trade skill aptitude chest once you do enough smelting but you can definitely get asmodium and which is a very high value in-game material and this will be something that is going to be quite nice for you to do so mining will definitely be up there as well as harvesting harvesting is not bad wire fiber plants get about 600 experience they can go up to 900 experience from what i've seen so that's about a thousand so you would only need to gather uh, about 17 of these plants in order to hit that trade skill aptitude box and that's not too shabby as well as getting materials that you're going to need for end game anyways right uh, so all of these gathering professions are pretty good and then we'll comment a little bit about skinning because the best i saw was a thousand for a normal standard monster there are some deer or corrupted elk or something like that in the shattered mountain which give about 2100 experience but even at 2100 experience when you skin them it's going to take you 146k in order to get to the next level which is uh, 70 something odd deer kills and that could get a little bit obnoxious right imagine killing 70 of these corrupted elk and shattered mountain and then skinning them that's going to take you like what an hour or two hours that's that sounds atrocious so maybe we don't go that route and since skinning is kind of a bust it looks like weaving or uh, sorry leather working would also be a bust um, in on top of that uh, weaving is a nice byproduct of the uh, wire fiber that you can get to so that wouldn't be too bad uh, to go from there and then we'll talk about stone cutting which will be the final thing that i'll discuss um, because i think that you know your top three for sure is going to be logging mining and harvesting so that's top three right there and then we'll have a bonus one on stone cutting um, and then maybe 
top it off with a final like maybe fishing type deal but i don't know too much on that but stone cutting is interesting because it requires 800,000 experience in order to get to the next level however if you meld up blue gems into a purple gem you will get 41,000 experience for that craft which is a lot so if you make 20 purple gems out of blue gems you have instantly hit your stone cutting level and that's not a very tall ask as several platinum veins drop four maybe five blue gems of three different types so you can get 15 blue gems off one platinum vein i've seen it before you can also just get the raw purple gem and cutting the raw purple gem into a gem that you're going to use anyways is 31,000 experience so it's something that you could sell on the market and be repeatable so i think the idea of all this is go after a profession that gives you the aptitude box but can also make you profit along the way so you can kind of knock out two birds with one stone and that's what's going to make mining so valuable uh logging so valuable and stone cutting so valuable is you're going to actually be getting something that you can sell whereas like the crafting professions you're probably just going to be making dud items just to get your recipe so that you can make a high level item at the end and that one will sell because it will be very powerful but just keep in mind that uh, it's going to be a long process to do that and then finally, we'll talk about fishing because that one's a bit of a weird one. I've heard anywhere between 150 to 200 XP for fishing points. So if you are able to get 200 XP, it wouldn't be too many casts, especially in a fishing hot spot where you could get a lot of good things that you may also need anyways, like the legendary fish to create the legendary fish recipe items. So this might be a good route to go. The only catch with this one, no pun intended, is that you basically have to have 200 fishing and I don't think very many people have that in the game. Like, let's be completely honest. It takes a massive amount of time to get there. It's very tragic. Uh, so if you do have 200 fishing, then by all means, this could be the route for you. Uh, but I put it as that side note with a caveat because I know that probably 99% of the people in the game do not have 200 fishing. All right. So that's pretty much it for this. Um, so in summary, we're going to have our favorite three ways to get the trade skill aptitude box for the gypsum creation, which is going to be logging, mining, and harvesting in that order. And my particular opinion right and so grain of salt with all of this and then you are going to have a side note for stone cutting uh, which is going to be one of the better professions to use the products that you're getting to turn into other products that are useful to sell and also get some extra trade skill aptitude uh, boxes and then that same process would go for all of the uh, refining material uh, trade skills so like weaving woodworking smelting all of those are pretty solid take a hard pass skip on skinning as it's probably not worth it and then when you look at things like jewel crafting and engineering and armoring and arcana all the things where you create something it is going to be a a product that you do in order to reach an end goal which the end goal is going to be this tier three chest you're looking to get that recipe so it's not something that's efficient in terms of getting aptitude boxes for gems for the gypsum but it is something that will give you a very powerful high level craft that you could probably sell for a lot of cash uh, so do keep that in mind and then i guess one final mention on cooking it could be good to stockpile some of these low materials as the cooking experience is not quite high. You could probably get a set of something there, but we don't know what this uh, box is containing. So unless it contains some like recipes and cooking ingredients, it may or may not be worth it. So to be determined on cooking. We'll see on that one. All right. Well, thanks for your time, everyone. I hope this guide and information sort of helped you understand this system a little bit better and what you may want to aim for coming here in the future. So thanks for uh, checking all that stuff out. And of course, the resources will be in the description down below. If you have not already, make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell. We also have a join button if you wish to become a member today. And we have a Discord in the description link also if you just want to chat and get updated information just like this. Thanks for your time, and we will catch you in the next video.